Hello everyone, Chris here with Platinum Reviews. Today, I have the newest Platinum Review for Final Fantasy Crisis Core Reunion on PlayStation 5. Before we jump into the review, don't forget to hit the like button and subscribe to the channel. It means a lot to me. Also, I lost all my video clips for the game. I had to re-record everything just before making this review. So if you see a lot of the same things from the same chapters, I was able to load up previous chapters because I saved every single chapter, but I don't have as many epic moments as I did on those previous clips. Don't know what happened to them. It just hated me. I don't know, but oh well. Let's jump into the review for Final Fantasy Crisis Square Reunion. I have been a long-standing Final Fantasy fan, playing almost every Final Fantasy game and spin-off. However, some still elude me. Crisis Core was one of those. My PSP was stolen before the game launched, and I just never had a chance to pick it up after that. So going into Crisis Core, I was ecstatic to finally play this one. However, I knew the outcome of the game due to spoilers throughout the years. I was still beyond excited to play. I can't really compare this to the original one due to me not having played it. I will say, however, from what I have seen, there is a massive graphical improvement. The PSP game was not ugly by any means, and it still holds up to this day, but they did a really great job at making it more on par with modern games. Crisis Core follows the events pre-Final Fantasy VII. This time around, you play as Zack, Shinra Soldier First Class, as he takes on missions while ultimately trying to stop Genesis's evil plan. I'm pretty sure about 99% of people know the ending to this game, but for that 1%, we are not going to spoil anything. What I do like, however, is that even though the game has been spoiled for me in every possible way, I still loved the story and really enjoyed playing with Zack. Now, being a PSP port, some of the core components of the game were very common around the PSP era. Mission lists that you undertake while moving along the story. Games like Metal Gear Peace Walker had a very similar layout to this. Very linear areas. Kingdom Hearts Birth by Sleep was another one that comes to mind with linear gameplay. Weird combat systems that, while goofy, actually works. And while this game does feel like it's a PSP game, the modernization of the combat system feels smooth and works very well to make a unique experience. The gameplay in Crisis Core is pretty simple. Chapter-based story elements with missions that you can take part in to pass the time, get stronger, or get new items. New missions unlock as you progress through the game, complete other missions, complete side quests, or talk to side characters. With 300 missions that range in difficulty, I will say that the mission system definitely overstays its welcome. With those 300 missions, there is about four to five different areas, and other than about 15 missions, all the missions are the exact same thing. Start a mission, find the enemy marked on your map, and kill them. After so many missions of overall the same thing, it becomes a chore to complete these. I would have liked some different tasks to do, or even a few more areas to explore, but unfortunately one of the main components of the game just dragged on. Now the combat system uses a slot type combat. Get three of the same character, and you get to summon them for a special move. This ranges from awesome summons like Neo Bahamut, or fun summons like Cactar. You can also use moves from other characters, like Eris Healing Wave. To level up, you have to roll three sevens in a row, which was a very weird concept, but I never felt like I was underleveled or struggling in fights due to my level. So while it has some randomness of luck, it never hindered me from continuing the game. The game is gorgeous. Square Enix put the bar very high for what to expect from a remaster. Stunning graphics and character designs really set this game apart from a lot of other remasters. And the music. Final Fantasy has some of the best video game music out there, and this is no exception. Taking a lot of the soundtracks from Final Fantasy VII, they added a little bit of a twist to it, changed it up a little bit, and made it its own and it is a welcome addition to the game. Final Fantasy Crisis Core Reunion really is a great game, and Square Enix, I just really appreciate them bringing back some of the classic Final Fantasy games for the newer audience. I would give Final Fantasy Crisis Core Reunion an 8 out of 10. 
It is a amazing journey, an amazing time. However, the missions, which are a main component of the game, really, really drag on and are very repetitive. As far as the Platinum is concerned, it is not that bad of a Platinum. The Platinum does require you to beat the game on hard difficulty, but you can play through the entire game on normal right before you get to the final boss, save the game and put it on hard difficulty and you'll be able to get that trophy for beating it on hard difficulty. As far as everything else, save on every single chapter. As soon as you start the chapter and you get a save point, save the game because there are a lot of missable trophies. I would definitely suggest looking at a guide, looking at where certain things are because you can miss a lot. Also, if you are in a mission and you are trying to avoid enemies, hug the wall. If you hug the wall, the enemies can't attack you most of the time. So you're able to get away from enemies a lot more and avoid fights, which really helps unless you're trying to level up and that doesn't help. But other than that, let me know if you guys have any questions about the game in the comments down below. This has been Chris with Platinum Review. Thank you so much for watching. And as always, keep getting those trophies. I'll catch you on the next video.